And uh, so it is similar to a baptism pool, perhaps the ancestor of a baptism pool, because at the time when you had this, uh, when this was the Aphrodite temple, uh, or the ancient Greek time and Roman periods, there would always be a basin like this one, and they would put uh, leaves of flowers on the water, and basically people coming in to pray in the temple uh, would use this water uh, to clean their faces, to purify themselves before they enter into the temple. Now, the temple in front of us, the temple of Aphrodite, you can see that some of the columns have been put back together. Uh, but uh, how was it built originally? Well, the technique that we know that Greek, and uh, the name of Jesus, is ichthus. Yes. And you, c you can write it the way that it is written with the ancient Greek letters. Is, is an I and an X and a theta. Hmm? And Y and a Sigma. Okay? So, Ichthus in ancient Greek. Uh, it, at the same time, it means a fish. Yep. Yeah. And, <coughs> yeah. and the, the thing is, the, the, the first Christians living here, you'll have the I, huh? and then you'll have the X. <laughs> and then you have the theta that goes all around like this and like that. And inside here you already have the Y and you already have the sigma, which is like that. Yeah. Oh, yes. And what you do is you just do like that and like this and like that. And you have the Orthodox cross. Yep. Oh, you know, yes. you, you know this as the Maltese yes. cross. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now the reason why you know it as a Maltese cross is because after the Crusades, the Knights of Saint John. Saint John yeah. So you wouldn't know why if I had just a lovely set of Pope cross tiles in there to be seen. Well, I'm going to have a lot while I'm in here. Now, know. Julie. She knows about size. Now, Julie. <laughs> yes, lady knows about size. yes, it's a bit small. <laughs> oh. Ah. Very large restaurant.
oh. catering for all the coaches. Breaking this the is the, um, the this Turkish, is Turkish tea. tea. Mm. Mm. It tastes like English tea. I'm quite accustomed to it. Mm. I'll be drinking tea with no milk when I get back. Yeah. yeah. I'm nearly out of this film, so I'll have to just. And what event happened today, Tom? Uh, we had a little fall, didn't we? Oh. Both of us went there. Yes. But um, hopefully just a few grazes. Um, and Linda, you were very shook up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> What are you having? Um, kebab. Kebab. A nice chicken kebab. Um, yeah, nice chicken kebab. There we are, back in Dover. And the white cliffs. There's calcium in the rocks. All natural. Very nice. A World Heritage Site. And we have some little duckies. Oh, very nice. There you see it close up. Natural calcium coming out the rocks. Beautiful. I be team. All the little shops selling their bits and pieces. Right there. Money. Mm. He's with got no money. <laughs> and if you look, you can see people, they walk along where the calcium is. There is a walking trail and they walk all the way along up the calcium. <laughs> To the top they walk. Wow. You see someone in a hang glider right on top. They must catch the thermals up there, I expect. You can see one looks as if it's coming in to land. Windsurfer. I hope he doesn't land in the road.
might land in the lake. Miss the tree. He's coming straight towards us. <laughs> and the sunset is in the in the west. <laughs> the second one is in Ephesus, and the third one is here, here at Bodies. So uh, the most known one is Pergamon. That's where you have it. It was it is called the Asclepion. Uh, the famous uh, first doctor in history uh, lived there uh, and uh, one day actually he was a shepherd and uh, a snake bit him so he went to the Asclepion at that time the Asclepion in those years was only dealing with uh, mentally ill patients and so they told him well there's nothing you, we can do for you so you're going to die so he was in pain, so he went back uh, to the hills and he found a few more snakes and poured their venom into a cup. And some story says uh, that he uh, cooked it for a while and then to commit suicide, he drank it. So he wouldn't have any more pain. But what happened is he, he healed, basically. And he, he went back to the Asclepion and he said, uh, well, uh, I, you said that I was going to die, and I did this and this, and uh, well, they said, well, then you should be a doctor here. <laughs> and they took him in as a uh, as a as, as a doctor, and uh, well, you know, the, the, all the doctors that finished medical school, they take an oath. Do you remember the oath? Yeah. An oath? Yeah. But what was what is that called? Hippocrates. Hippocrates, yes. That shepherd's name is Hippocrates. Oh. And the symbol of the medicine no, is the cup, that cup with the snakes around it. Yeah. So uh, when people first went to Pergamon, if they couldn't find a cure there, they went to Ephesus. And finally, when they couldn't find a cure there, they, their final you know, point was the spring waters of Pamukkale. Is our hotel? So here we are. Hotel. Very nice. So in our lovely hotel room here. And a little look out onto the balcony. And uh, all the coaches waiting for the tourists to set off. We'll be setting off at nine o'clock this morning. The late one this morning. But um, it was a bit dark when we arrived yesterday, so I couldn't see it, but here you've got all of the, uh, in the background you see all of the large mountains.
really nice. Uh, in the past, uh, as you might imagine, every civilization, uh, when, uh, when a king was uh, buried, uh, just like we saw in uh, Dalian, uh, they would be buried with all their treasures. And, uh, well, uh, the treasure room of one king cracked, and there was water that leaked in, and then afterwards, it froze. So everything inside the room froze with it. And, uh, well, uh, the Russian archaeologists, uh, they found this grave and they defrosted it, naturally. And there they found uh, a carpet, which is called uh, Pazirik. Pazirik. You, you can see it if you go to St. Petersburg one day. It's in the Hermitage Museum. And from the design and the way that the knots are made, we know that it is a Turkish carpet of a Turkish king. And it is... I'm in the Taurus Mountains now. spectacles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Incredible. Oh, that's lovely. I love that.
Next row will be again 10 mistake. The next one again 10 mistake. So that, that means the design is going like this or like yeah. that. Yeah. This is a mistake. Yeah. Then you have to open. Yeah. You have to open 10 rows, 5 rows, whatever the number is. You open all these rows and you rework them again. Otherwise, you will see there is a, there is a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, next row. This thing will show us slowly how the gentleman was asking about that. Because I showed on my fingers that it was very quick and very fast. Okay, she will show us slowly. Look, because that is a wool carpet, so you can see it much better and easier. Look, again, two off the board. Again, like my fingers, I try to show it here on my fingers one more time again. Like this, okay. No, it's, it's actually like that. It's difficult for her to do slowly. She's losing her real time work. That's the reason. How long does it take to train the lady up to do this? About two years. But it depends again, ladies and gentlemen, how it's talking with another lady about that with her. And it takes two years to learn. But according to their talent, ladies and gentlemen, to change. But the minimum two years of time reproduction. And this one is named wool on, on wool. So that means the warp is wool, the weft is wool, and the pile is wool. This one is done wool on cotton. The background is cotton, the knots are done with wool, and the other ones they're all pure silk. But we have different combinations as well. I will tell you later. So warp on the weft is also. On that one is 100 percent warp, weft and the pile made of 100 percent silk. It's good, it's very good, but it's one step down and the silk ones, price wise. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, can we go one, one, one next station? See the silk equipment. It's still in here, isn't it? Yeah, but it can be it gets worn inside again. You need to know. Yeah, but it's still in here, isn't it? Yeah, but it gets worn inside again. You need to know. Here is a nice one, look here. We eat here. You want more? Oops. Please my friends, please you can touch, you can pass it forward to the others as well. And if you shake them inside, you can hear the voice that is the silkworm inside. It's that, it's that. They're, they're not alive. They're all they're all dead, by the way. Oh yeah, because it's show show. <laughs> okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me tell you very short about the story of the silk, the way how we get the silk from the cocoons. Uh, by the way, silk, ladies and gentlemen, as you do know, is coming from, from China. Originally, it comes from China. Also, uh, it came from China to Turkey many, many centuries ago with the silk road. So we do produce our silk in Turkey. We are not buying silk from any other country. We have our cotton fields, especially on the south coast of Turkey, also this area of Turkey. And we do have approximately 35 million sheep in Turkey. I don't know who count them, but it's a little like that. So 35 million sheep. We have and we do have on the west coast of Turkey about 3,000 families which are growing silk in very big farms. And the silkworm, which is inside, I would like to show you one of them if I can. Okay, because it's difficult to open them, it's very hard to open them. Look, that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is, that is the silkworm which is inside. Not very handsome. <laughs> Not very beautiful, but, but they are doing an amazing big job, ladies and gentlemen. Real very big job. I'll show you here as well, here, please. Okay. They do not look very nice, I know that, but they taste good. Chili sauce? Okay. I mean, I did not try. It was just told by somebody else. I don't know. So, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Burda, you know this guy? Who? Anthony Burden, he makes probably oh, yeah. yeah, he, he, he eats them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these silkworms, they eat, they eat the leaves from the mulberry trees. Yes. And the best mulberry trees, or the best climatical conditions to get mulberry trees in Turkey is the western coast. That is the reason why we do produce our silk in West Turkey. So the silkworm is eating the mulberry leaves about four weeks. They do come out from a little end. The reason the silk is in the body of the animal in liquid form. 
So it comes out from the body, and what happens? It gets smaller, 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 and finally one centimeter. I wish I could do the same. <laughs> <laughs> once, a year, once a year would be enough, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Once a year would be enough. ...of silk, which goes around the cocoon. There is actually one single piece. I, I catched many of them, but there is one single continuous ex uh, piece of flament which goes around of the cocoon in the length of 1,500 meters. Wow. In average, of, because they are in different sizes, but in average, 1,500 meters of silk in one of these cocoons. So when the butterfly, when the moth comes out, what happens? Like a chicken comes out from the egg, mm. they make a hole yeah. and they break the silk. So the silk is broken and we cannot produce silk with that. The reason why we have to kill the silkworm is that. That's the reason why they are dead inside. We kill the silkworm with hot pressure air, with steam. They do not kill all of them. If you kill all of them, you have no other silk cocoons. So in one production, they take 70% for silk production, 30% they keep aside for the next generation. These are the lucky ones, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So the silk, when it's in making silk in the whole world, the basic system is that what you will see now. So there is no machine for that, always done by hand. He boils the cocoon one hour in hot water. When they get boiled, they get soft. The saliva of the silkworm melt. And this helps us to find the beginning of the silk. It's like glue. He takes this high technology brush. <laughs> <laughs> That's his very magic tool, ladies and gentlemen. With this, with this brush, he hit the cocoon, and the beginning of the silk thread will stick on the brush. Let's see how this is done. What drops down is just water, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, this is the silk, very, this rose silk now, 100%. It feels like spider's web. It, it feels actually like, uh, like horse hair, ladies and gentlemen. It's not very soft. You know, silk is amazing soft, but this is quite hard. Also, the silk in here is very hard. Okay? This has to be washed later on, and after washing it gets soft. It's just hot water, nothing, there's just hot water inside. And by the way, this hot water, ladies and gentlemen, when we complete the production, it gets recycled again later on. This we sell to the flowers industry, to the botanic industry, and they give it to the flowers, this water, because it's vitamin food water. So no waste, it gets recycled that way. So when we have the silk beginning, ladies and gentlemen, you see this is the beginning part of the silk, but the slam ends together. He's not counting, he has a feeling for that. He passed this through the little ring, what we have here, oh, yeah. many little rings. He passed it here through. From here it goes forward to the big wheel, this is like a spinning wheel. He turns the big wheel with his foot with the head up, ladies and gentlemen, and when he turns the wheel, the silk comes out from the cocoon, and that is the way how we get the silk. Let's see how this is done. But he's cleaning the silk now. He's of course not doing the first time in his life, so it goes much easier. But this is now the clean part, look. Very clean, very, very even, ladies and gentlemen. And let's see how he's preparing one thread. That silk, this is the beginning, that we sell to the textile industry. They make scarves with that. Second quality, third choice, for example. Look, he pass it through the ring. When it comes through that little wheel, it gets twisted, by the way. Okay. Now, he turns the wheel. And when he turns the wheel, the silk comes out from the cuckoo. Do you see the ones which are jumping yeah, in the water? Yeah, yeah. These are the ones which get <laughs> out from outside to inside. 